Well, good afternoon. This is Pastor Gloria Dennis of Sure Word Fellowship. And as promised, I am coming on to do a summary of this morning's message. We know that the Mevo camera is having some challenges with our Wi-Fi and that the message kept buffering. Um, that does not happen on the cell phone and the Wi-Fi extender, you know, for whatever purpose, you know, it is for, it doesn't give it a problem on the cell phone. So we're working on that. So I'm just going to make sure that we uh, get this message in today. Thank you so much for joining in with us this morning. Um, let's, so let's just get started. Amen. Father, we thank you that uh, we have this opportunity to uh, come together again and to share on this word. Lord, we don't mumble, grumble, nor complain concerning what has happened. We just give you honor. We just give you praise because all things are still working together for good to them who love the Lord and who are the called according to his purpose. And so we thank you, Lord, for the purpose that this message is for on today. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. All right. So the message on today was entitled, I am too embarrassed to ask. I was too embarrassed to ask. And it's the story concerning Nicodemus. So we're going right into John chapter 3, verse 1. John chapter 3, verse 1. We're going to read right through and go on to our, our, our summary. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. For no man can do these miracles that thou doest, except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time? into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. And I'm going to stop right there um, with John chapter 3, verses 1 through 7, and uh, go right into our summary. All right. So the story, this uh, story account that we have here is uh, some a true event that happened. We find that Nicodemus is a Pharisee, and a Pharisee is someone who um, is a ruler amongst the Jewish nation and is very respected for uh, what they know and their status. Nicodemus then uh, had heard about Jesus because of the, we find out in verse number two that Nicodemus says, we know that you are a teacher that comes from God because no man can do these miracles except he come from God. So this number one gives us an account that all of those folks in the councils, the Jewish councils, had seen miracles, seen people delivered, seen demons cast out of them and, and whatever that needed to happen. They saw these things, didn't just have to hear tell of it. And also that they saw people that were healed. And so he knew that Jesus had some authority and power that had to be of God. But the challenge is that Nicodemus came to Jesus by night. Why did he come to Jesus by night? He came to Jesus by night because he was a man of influence and he valued the opinions of others because of the influence that he had. And so when he comes to Jesus by night, he comes reverencing him, but it also gives us another statement here because if he really was not ashamed, if he really was not embarrassed to do it, why wouldn't he come in the day? He was a ruler of the Jews, truly understood. So then we go on to talk about, well, what is the difference between being ashamed and being embarrassed? 
if a person is ashamed, then that means that nobody else had to be present during the event. I'm ashamed of the fact that I uh, screamed at my child this morning. Okay, the child doesn't have to be present. It just is a, a feeling of self-guilt. That's what makes me ashamed. When I'm embarrassed, that means that people were present because, ooh, you know, if you trip and there's no one there, oh, you know, inside I feel ashamed, shamed that I tripped. But I'm not embarrassed unless I see other people and see them looking on and maybe giggling. That was what makes me embarrassed. And so in the sense here with Nicodemus, he was embarrassed if people saw him. So he came to Jesus by night. And so I'm wearing this peacock here on my shoulder because Nicodemus had a peacock spirit. He had pride in who he was and the people that he was around. And so he only came by night to Jesus because he didn't want to be embarrassed to ask Jesus more questions, knowing that he was a teacher and a great teacher, a master teacher, better than he himself is in the script was in the scriptures. So his peacock was riding him and he had to come to Jesus by night. So then when Jesus talks with Nicodemus, Nicodemus asked the question, can a man be born again once he is old? Shall he enter into his mother's womb a second time? And this is a uh, play on the wording that also lets us know that Nicodemus was embarrassed to ask because he knows terminology. I'm sure he could break down the difference between Greek, Hebrew, and Aramaic. He was, of course, one of the rulers of the Jews. And so for him to use the term born as in born of birth, when Jesus is saying be born again, is for him to play on words. It's the same thing that we would do. If I tell you that um, I am born of a woman, you would be, of course you are. You know, you're human and you had to be born of a woman. But if we say that the uh, Reformation age was born out of the revolution or something like that, then we're saying something about an event or an error that happened and it's nothing that is I mean, a natural birthing, but it is a, uh, the Renaissance, uh, there's a, an event, there's a period, there are, it's a mindset that has to happen. And so when Jesus is saying about being born again, that Nicodemus knew that it was not in no sense that he was trying to stress, but because he was embarrassed to ask, he didn't want people to know that he was coming to the true teacher to get the answers that he needed, he put it in a different term. So of course, Jesus then goes ahead and entertains him and says that that it is born of flesh is flesh and that that is born of spirit is spirit. And that except a man be born of the water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. So except he be a man, first of all, that is born in the natural, can he then even be born in the spirit? So Jesus is giving him a great example here. But of course, we find that it was because Peter, excuse me, that Nicodemus was too embarrassed to ask. So then I went on to talk about how uh, we all have things that we do in the natural sense when we're just trying to make it, amen. Uh, there's a term that's called fake it until you make it, where you use the terminology. Um, and so there, here we find that these rulers of the Jews were using terminology, but they weren't uh, living or really had a relationship with that which they were saying. And I thought about it in the sense of Spanish, in this example. 
because if I am around a Spanish speaker, then I would say, oh, there are some words that um, in order to sound Spanish, I could use, like if I wanted to say the word coupon, instead of saying coupon as in English, I may say cupones as in to be speaking Spanish. And uh, it may impress others to think that, oh yes, she knows some Spanish, but a person that knows Spanish will be like, right, you know, whatever you're 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 really faking this here and you're no you're not fooling anybody but yourself and those who are ignorant along with you so then i go on to share then that an example that they gave us in uh in spanish class was the word embarazado so if i'm saying the word embarrassed in english uh embarrassed in english being that i am uh <laughs> you know, feeling some kind of way, uh, because of, you know, the thinking that it, it's, uh, the impression of others. Then when in Spanish, if I were to say, instead of the word like, Oh, I'm in <laughs> I'd be totally wrong, totally wrong because the word in means pregnant. And so we were sharing that because with today being mother's day, uh, there were many that had been truly embarrassada, but, um, but we find here that Nicodemus, he was embarrassada and just didn't know it. How was Nicodemus then embarrassada? How was he then pregnant? He had been impregnated with the word of God. He had seen the miracles that Jesus had done and they had reached into his spirit and had him contemplating in his very soul what was really going on. Did he have what he said he has? Was he truly a man of God? Or was he someone out there faking it? He was pregnant because he had heard the teachings of Jesus. And the word does not go out void, but it accomplishes that which it was sent to do. He was embarrassed. And that embarrassado for Nicodemus, being that he's the male, and we're, so we're using the masculine term of being pregnant, we're saying that, yes, he was pregnant with the child. He was pregnant with something that he was going to be bringing forth, and that was a, a faith in Jesus Christ as a son of God. How do we know this? Because when Nicodemus sat with Jesus by night, and heard the things that he heard, it took seed in his womb, in his spiritual womb. And we find that later when uh, Jesus is taken into the courts, uh, well, they want to really crucify him without a trial, that uh, it was the same Nicodemus who spoke up and said, how can you condemn a man and he not go through the proper judicial process? And then we know that he was pregnant with this word because Nicodemus is the same one who, when Jesus had been crucified and they took his body off the cross and uh, they wanted to take him to the, take it with the, the tomb of Joseph of Arimathea, it was Nicodemus who brought oils and spices for the, uh, we would call it in, in our time, the embalming of the body which was something that was in the natural sense that he wanted to do as him understanding that Jesus was the son of God. And so this type of ointments that he was bringing, you would only bring those to people who were kings. You would not bring those to uh, someone that was a poor class. So he honored God and he was impregnated with this word. So then how, how would then Peter know that he was impregnated? How would Nicodemus know that he was impregnated? Nicodemus would know that he was impregnated because he had some symptoms. What were those symptoms? Uh, three out of four women when they're pregnant experience some type of bowel discomfort. Let's call it constipation. And some 20 years ago, I did a message uh, Mother's Day called Thanks Mom. 
being M-O-M, which stands for milk of magnesia. What did mom mean? I talked on that message concerning how when you take a little bit of the milk of magnesia, what it does is it works the gases out of your system. But if you take a large dose of milk of magnesia, it becomes a laxative to your body. What Nicodemus was feeling was that what I had heard from the Lord, I couldn't shake. I couldn't just release it. It was staying in my system. I couldn't let it go. It was in my bowels. It was causing me to toss and turn at night that I had to come and see Jesus. I had to talk with Jesus. This is my situation. I find that I can't move like I used to move. I couldn't just let it go when I heard the teachings like I used to let it go. I am constipated by this word because it just won't shake me. I can't let it go. So what happened? He came to think that he was just going to get him a teaspoon of this milk of magnesia, which was a dose of the Holy Spirit, the word of God. And when he came, he came wanting the natural sense of it. Oh, um, I, you're a teacher of the Jews, and I know that you are a man of God. And uh, how then can I be born? So he was thinking in the fleshly sense. So he wanted to deal with what he could reason with. So he just wanted a teaspoon, amen, of this milk of magnesia. But praise God. Jesus knew the heart and he knew the plan and purpose that Nicodemus would have going throughout history. And so when Nicodemus came, he addressed him. He said, oh, yes, you must be born of the water, but you've also got to be born of the spirit. And so Nicodemus had to then take that proud peacock spirit that he has and he had to take that down from him. And he had to ask. He's got to ask, what must I do to be saved? He's got to ask the specifics. Because remember, when you ask, it says, those who knock, the door shall be open. Those who seek, they shall find. And those who ask, they shall receive. And what we need to do as a people on this day is that we need to ask the Lord to work in us. Ask him to forgive us of our sins. Confess with our mouth and believe in our heart that Jesus Christ was raised from the dead. And know that the, the, the work that was done on the cross was done for us. So as a people, we too, when God is working on us, there is something that's happening in our bowels. There's something that's happening in our bellies. And what it is is that, there, and we're going to get into this. I'm not going to go much further because we'll spend a little more time going in depth on our third Saturday at 3, which will be this uh, Saturday. We'll go into third Saturday at 3. Meet us here at 3 o'clock p.m. for uh, that foundation Bible training. And we're going to break this thing down a little further for why the word is alive and it's well in our souls like it is. But just know that we can't be too embarrassed to ask. Because the reason why you're asking is because no man comes except he be drawn by the Spirit of God. No man will want to know what must I do to be saved except the Spirit move on him. And so whatever's gotten in your system, whatever word that you've heard, he that has an ear, hear it. Hallelujah. He that has eyes, see it. And he that has a heart, harden not your heart. Amen. That you can receive this word of God. You don't have to come at night. If you're embarrassed, if you're looking at how pe what people are going to think about you, then you got to come at night. But if you're not embarrassed, you're going over there to Luke chapter 9, verses 26 and 27 that said, Hey, if you're ashamed to own my, me and my words, this is what Jesus said, If you are ashamed to own me, 
and my words, my word of life, if it makes you personally in your soul shameful to own me and my word, you're not fit for the kingdom. I will deny you before my father, which is in heaven. So let us as a people not be too embarrassed to ask because what we are embodicidoed with, what we are pregnant with is a promise. We're impregnated with a purpose. We're impregnated with a Jeremiah 29 and 11 and except the Lord build the house, we'll labor in vain to build it. Allow God to do the work in you and he will do it well. Blessings on you on today as we share on I was too embarrassed to ask from Sure Work Fellowship located at 1500 Northwest 143rd Street here in Jonesville, Florida. Love you much.